Welcome everybody to episode 192 of the China Show. Almost a 200. Yeah, we've got quite the show for you today. We're going to be talking about a whole whack of topics, but something very big and very important has just leaked from China, something that has gotten the Chinese government up in it is. They're scrambling to try and censor this information. And we're going to be covering that during the show. So. Yeah, I was confused. I'm looking at this delicious map you have up here. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, nobody can see that yet. Yes, I can. This map, you yeah. mean? This, this lovely map. map? Okay. Well, we'll discuss this map shortly because it's in what's maps. new, of course. And we're going to talk about everything that's new specifically with regards to China. Now, looking at this map, just to give people an idea of the area we're talking over here. Okay. Hong Kong, as you can see, is just over there. Most people should be familiar with that. Yeah. Hainan, this little island next to me where all the intelligence services and stuff for China run out of, and that's where people go to Sanya for these trips and things, okay? Before we know they that. get indoctrinated yeah, before they, for the CCP. Yeah, before they become like fully-fledged shills. Um, and then, of course, we've got Guangxi province over here, which you and I have both traveled extensively. Yeah, because it's right next to yeah. Guangdong where we lived. So, yeah, we lived in Guangdong, which is this kind of chicken nugget looking thing over here yeah okay that is kind of a chicken nugget kind of you know yeah. like one of those yeah and then we went into uh, guangxi a lot on motorcycle yes now where you see nanning that's the capital it's a big developed city in yep. guangxi um about a three hour drive out of nanning uh nanning is a tianli county okay something happened there in okay Tianlin. yeah i thought i'd show you i thought okay. i thought people might be interested to see i actually what... haven't seen this Okay, well, yeah. This no is, joke. Yeah, this is interesting what happened there. So imagine this. You're like a farmer, a rural village dude or whatever. You're chilling out and then you just see this falling out of the sky. Is it a piece of wood? That's not a piece of wood. I just saw it. It's so small. Boom. Well, it had flames. So it had That's flame. one, okay? And then all of a sudden you see another one coming out of the sky. Oh, yeah. No, I can, yeah, it's like a cylinder. Yeah. And it oh, like man. blows up right next to your house and almost destroys your house and it, your fields and all when, that stuff. It is, as bad as that is, can you pause that for a second? Sure. I thought, I'm sorry, I'm just a little confused. I thought the Chinese government got rid of poverty. <laughs> no, not even close. Oh, okay. Thanks for correcting me. Okay. Anyway, what you see there are noxious fumes, okay, escaping from this mystery object. Okay. Okay. But it's not actually. A mystery object. Um, uh, I'll show you in a second. Can you go back to that? I just want. Sorry, I just want. Yeah. To, from the beginning of that clip, I want to see that smoke. Yeah. It's like uh, it's almost orange. like a sulfur. Yeah, it looks like sulfur. Well, that's that's you know rocket fuel that's oh. you know <laughs> um, burning off, which is incredibly toxic for you. Um, so basically, what happened is there was a notice that the government then put out to say to the local villagers to be like, hey, listen, there's some random rocket de debris going to be falling down because yeah. of a launch satellite. If it manage if it happens to hit any of your houses or hit any of you, um, then, you know, you can claim yeah. compensation. Yeah. But it was an after the fact sort <laughs> I of like thing. That. I was about to say, this happened afterwards. Yeah, it's just like, hey, <laughs> you know. Like, um, by the way, if you died, we'll hook you up with some benefits. I mean, here's here's the thing, okay? Um, the Chinese Space Agency, as we all know, we constantly hear about it. China has a space station, right? Mm -hmm. China is trying to land on the moon, trying to claim the moon. China's like uh, trying to send people to Mars. China's this in the, you know. Remember, China claims to be a developing country, which clearly it is, actually, if you look at the yeah, footage here. Poor. But they have a space program, and they're sending people to space and rockets to space. But at the same time, they're still receiving foreign aid for yeah. poverty from like first world countries around the world. The thing is, their space race and their space program is so poorly put together. It's they don't care the, you know the the mean the ends justify the means type of thing. Yes. They're like, we need to get a satellite up there. What's the quickest, dirtiest way we can do it? Yeah. Okay. I think the uh, it. it you know, it'd be stupid if we didn't bring up the fact that they've given countless thousands and thousands of people cancer with their nuclear testing in Xinjiang in recent mm -hmm. years. Yeah, recent years. And so this is like, again, I think akin to the space thing is they'll do something with zero regard for human life in mm -hmm. China as long as, because they can control the narrative afterwards. They can just shut everyone yeah. down, arrest people, throw them in black, pris black site prisons, right? Yeah. At the same time, they can put out this beautiful propaganda piece, all their cameras and CGTN and all these yeah. state outlets, and be like, "Look, we succeeded in this mission." Yeah, this is what you don't get to see. Well, I mean, here's the Haphazard. thing: uh, NASA and even the Soviet Union, 
you know, all the other spacefaring countries, okay, out there, when they launch something, when NASA launches a rocket or a whatever, they spend a huge amount of the time calculating where the debris is going to fall. For re-entry. For yeah. Because, yeah. you know, when a rocket goes up, you've got your different stages of the rocket that yeah. are going to fall away. They yeah. have to. That's how it works, right? So there is going to be something falling down to yeah. Earth. But they calculate to make sure that it doesn't fall over populated areas, in or... falls in the you know, the ocean. That's why they launch next to the sea. But they also cal- you've got to calculate everything: yes. the trajectories, the the winds, the rotation of the Earth, all the various um, things that come into play to make sure that whatever's going to fall down doesn't land in the middle of New York City or whatever. Absolutely, right. But when it comes to China, they don't care. It's yeah. like everything else when they build. Uh, a coal factory power plant they just want the power they don't care about what it's going to do to the environment they just do it yeah there's no exactly so i mean the fact that you've got rocket debris falling on people's houses and in this case nearly missing a person's house and spewing toxic gas everywhere where people live and you know it's just not okay actually this is a bit of a scientific point from one uh, person in chat word uh word dunlap says uh, I think he's probably correct. These are mustard rockets for the moon cheese sandwiches. <laughs> yeah, that's very scientific. <laughs> anyway, this, this, so just so you know what's going on, um, more debris has fallen down in China. And this is very recent. Okay, this is like um, 25th, actually, 26th, so the day after Christmas, day, yeah. uh, Boxing Day. Okay, so this is yeah. not something from the early days of China's space program where they were still making mistakes. No, this is their latest satellite launch. This is launch. from the 60s. Yeah, this is <laughs> from like, it look like last it. <laughs> this week. Yeah. You know what I mean? They launched this satellite up and their debris fell on people's houses and in their, well, in their backyards and stuff. And people had to evacuate and all that nonsense. Yeah. So just, just so we're clear. Right. That aside, okay, what are we going to talk about next? I'm still watching some rockets fall to Earth, thankfully not hurting anyone in this yes. case, like the many times that they have. What's What do you got going on here? Some village entertainment? Here, here's the thing. Okay. In China, and you can agree with me here, um, something that's kind of fun to observe is uh, when you go into any small town or village or even like medium-sized ones, you'll come across like a shopping area and they usually have some kind of performance set up. If you have to go to China, and again, I'm starting to get a little more uh, strict on re- even recommending anyone go there right now, mm-hmm. just because of the tensions. Mm-hmm. But if you have to go to China, yeah, <clears throat> or you can go back in time to when it was okay. Sure, sure. <laughs> go to a rural area. And when I say rural, I mean like a city of under a million people. Yeah. Right? Still very bustling, very populous. Mm-hmm. And go see what the locals are doing for entertainment. It, I promise you, it is high quality entertainment in terms of you have never seen anything like. That's it. right, but be prepared to really have your ears hurt. Yes. Yes. Anyway, um, so we thought we'd show you a little bit of one of these performances so you could see what the audience reaction um, to this performance is. Yeah. So l- let's just watch it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love this little gnome dude. He's like, I know what. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, That's it's, it's brilliant. Fantastic. Uh, pro- props to her for keeping yeah. her composure. I don't think I could perform if I had this this bizarre looking you, man you staring be- at me. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'd be worried he'd you, suddenly pounce or something. You know, he's gonna like he unsheath like he has claws some, and like some ah! tricks up his sleeve, yeah. doesn't he? Or Throw a potion hat. on you or something. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Oh, oh boy. my gosh. Leave it there. I just okay. want to say, mm-hmm. I gotta say, yeah. <laughs> I used to have this favorite clip yeah. of this woman, and it starts exactly the same. Oh yeah, it starts exactly the same. Mm-hmm. And she turns around, or the camera turns around, and it, it's a packed crowd, but it's like everyone's 90 plus. Yeah. But it's like like some techno song. It's yeah. exactly the same as this. Mm-hmm. So this is like the opposite of that with the same vibe. I prefer this. This gnome yes. guy rules. Yeah, he does. Little gnome. The gnome gnome. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Um, play back, it again. Play uh, it again. Okay, well, yeah, let's play it one more time. It, it bears repeating. You know? Okay, I'll go from the the rocket the rocket crash. Yes. Yes. That's just yeah. 
It's excellent. I just love that a lot. Now, now on to something a little bit more annoying, I would say. Only and, fan. Yeah, only fan. <laughs> yes. Normally fan. Dude. Normally fan. <laughs> okay, so what's going on here? This is on Christmas Day, okay? In, okay. Um, this is in Guiyang, okay? You know? Yes. Capital of Guizhou there. Okay. And um, they're having a, like a, a street festival type thing, okay? So you can see they've got stalls set up and all that, okay? Okay. And there were various people dressed, kind of doing cosplay dress-up type mm -hmm. thing, okay? One woman dressed up as one of her favorite characters and from a cartoon, and uh, she dressed up in a Japanese kimono. And I this, see that. this auntie went ballistic on her, you know? The usual, I wonder why. You are a traitor to the Chinese. I wonder you know, why. Yeah. And got the crowd, the crowd obviously gathered around. Everyone was like, you know berating her and yeah. uh, got to a point where she actually uh, took the kimono off and uh, apologized to the crowd. Wow. Mm. And I just I just want the, just people to see this because it's important to realize everybody that um, values their freedom of expression, mm -hmm. okay, in the West and who protests and goes out and does stuff, you cannot ever support China because you no. would not be allowed to do what you do. No. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So... Anyway, it's it's kind of maddening because if you look in the background, can you see over there? Yeah. There are other people dressed up as well. Uh -huh. Can you see there's like that couple yeah. and they're dressed up as like fantasy characters or whatever they yeah. are. Um, but she was sing singled out because she wore a, a kimono. Yeah, and you got to be careful in China with anything Japanese. Yeah. And, and I mean, that's the problem. This is, again, this was Christmas Day this year. This was just a few days ago. And uh, it's actually getting worse. Is it? It is getting worse. I think the Japanese stuff, I feel like, has always peaked. It peaked at a certain point. It's just always been bad since Yeah, then. but the thing is, there's been a lot of tolerance for, like, anime cosplay. Yeah, yeah and, sure. You know, like, it's been pushed with Genshin Impact and all that kind of thing. You yeah, know, but they consider like, that, I mean, that's Chinese, right? Yes. So they've really commandeered yeah, that. Yeah, but they still have all the Japanese-themed clothing and stuff. Yeah, you no, know, you're they right. They go off right. of that. And you see, I saw it myself. Many times where they'd have like, you know, in the mall, they'll have like a Japanese restaurant and wear kimonos and things. But it's just gotten worse and worse. Yeah, I see what you mean. I, I think it's going to be devastating <laughs> when Korea, you know, goes goes full on like we're not going to deal with China anymore because they've latched on to Korea way more than Japan now. Yeah. It's going to be a hard divorce for yeah. everyone in pop yeah, culture. It, it, it is. <laughs> anyway, just to show you again the complete intolerance and the, the fact that people are forced to, yes. you know, literally take their clothes off and apologize yeah. you know, in public. Not a good look. Now, yeah. <clears throat> remember, guys, green technology is great for the environment. So much so that... Um, you know, all these wonderful new, slightly used or never used EVs are being carted around to be destroyed on trucks. <laughs> Lots of them. And they've all been licensed, fully licensed and registered. And you see those plates on the back, those are the electric vehicle plates. Oh, it's yeah, part sorry. of the same clip. Yeah, this is just, I thought it would be like a nice little addition. Oh, okay. Because remember, China's the leader in producing EVs. And the reason they're the leader in producing EVs is because they made a lot, not, you know, it's literally that. It's like, here's a huge number. Yeah. So we're the leader. Right. And they produced a ton under subsidies and tricks and loopholes and things. Oh. And the majority of those cars that were produced to create these large numbers, and I'm being honest here when I say the majority, especially the Gen 1 and the very early generations of Chinese EVs, were just left to rot, not used, and are scrap. And like what you can see on the back, these cars are all perfectly fine. They could absolutely have been just reused or sold or whatever, but because that would screw up with screw up the um, scam, uh. they have to just be destroyed. Because think about it, right? They're all registered. So the yeah. companies that got the subsidies from the government, they got subsidies because for every car sold, they'd be paid. Yeah. So they fraudulently, many companies fraudulently uh, registered these vehicles so if they were to try and sell them the game the game would be up what a what a waste i know so what not only do you have waste. fields of these things rotting away now you can start to see you know just more of them being carted away to be destroyed i have a, a mm -hmm. report from gary mcbrien here yeah uh this is from unsatisfied popeye unsatisfied <laughs> popeye says this is misinformation those are gas <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the whole thing exactly unfortunately the green license plate gives it away and the yeah. fact that the cars 
they have a prop shaft tunnel underneath, but there's yeah. no prop shaft because there's no gasoline engine also gives it away. Because don't yeah. forget, most Chinese EVs, until mm. very recently, this new generation of NEOs and BYDs, the majority of Chinese EVs are just a gasoline car that they converted. Yes. They've got the factory, they pump. They can pump out a, a shell and a mm -hmm. chassis and everything, mm -hmm. and they just put a, a battery and an and a electric motor in it, you know? Yeah. Anyway... Um, I did want to quickly... Okay, doesn't matter where it is. Here's the thing. I, I wanted to just um, talk a little bit about EVs for just a short amount of time here. Um, and the reason is, is that um, the Chinese statistics themselves coming out of China um, have proven, well, state anyway, that there are a huge amount of EV fires, something like uh, seven EV fires a day. Wow. I believe it is. Per day. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, that's right. So, it and it's, yeah, about seven EVs. But now, look, that does include, that includes like other electric vehicles, so like e-bikes and stuff. It's also... From the Chinese state. It's from the Chinese, but even from the Chinese state, which, yeah, down, which downplays yeah. the number seven EV fires. And if you read the Chinese literature, EVs in China are more likely to catch fire uh, than c traditional internal combustion engines. And it's usually the other way around. Yeah. You yeah. know, if you look at statistics in the United States, it'll be like, you know, normal gas cars are prone to catch fire more than EVs. But yeah. you know why? Because it's less. Yeah, because there's just more gas yeah. cars around. That's what I mean. Right now in China, they pushed it so hard that there's more EVs around mm -hmm. than gas cars in many of the big cities. And yeah. so we're seeing... The, Obviously not by total. Just yeah, like yeah, in, yeah, yeah. In, gen in, in, in general, areas, like yeah. in certain areas, like a lot more than in the West. Right? Absolutely. So you're seeing more fires. So I just wanted to bring that up. You know, it's something to watch out for. Uh, the EV thing is not all roses and it's not great for the environment. EVs like are blowing up. Thinks. Yeah, they are. <laughs> oh, boy, I don't know why I yeah. just laughed at my own joke. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it was funny. <laughs> the, the, the whole EV push from China, like, just remember, guys, when you see a shiny BYD that's rolling out in your country out of a, a dealership or whatever, remember the cost to the, the environment and the wasted materials and the uh, uh, absolute honestly, destruction. Any, any EV. Yeah, but I'm getting to the point where I've done it. I've been looking into it. It's mm -hmm. pretty bad, dude. Sure. The sheer devastation to the environment. Yeah, I mean, we all know that the like mining for lithium. Nobody and wants all that's to talk bad. about it, though. I shouldn't yeah. say nobody. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's well covered. But like, it's one of those things where people like they, if they if they're super pro EV, like because mm -hmm. I could go either way to be honest, depending sure. on how this goes. Yeah. But right now it's tough because I feel like a lot of the people that are really promoting it, and this is, I'm sorry if this is off topic, but they really don't want to hear that side of it. No, things. they don't want to hear the bad uh, no. impact to the environment side. And China's EVs, which, as we all know, world leader because of the numbers, the amount of devastation to the environment, <laughs> you know, yeah. exactly. <laughs> you know, you if you look at just all the empirical evidence and the rotting fields of EVs and the, the EVs being destroyed and the huge amount of waste that was involved, the, the amount of d damage to the environment just to produce those vehicles yeah, is it's insurmountable. Insane. Yeah. Anyway, let's get off that boring topic uh, and depressing topic and look at something more fun, like the launch of a new fishing boat in China. Okay. A little comic relief here. Uh, well, that's one <laughs> less fishing boat that can go terrorize. There are, there the are world. a few fish out there celebrating They're right like, now. Yeah. yeah, like with their <laughs> fins <jumping>. there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, back to some more depressing stuff, oh. I suppose. What do you think's going on here, Sea Milk? This looks like a celebration of communist proportions. This mm -hmm. looks like, and I can tell you because I can see some stuff in the back there. Sure. A celebration of uh, Chairman Mao. Yes. The first dictator of, uh, communist dictator of China, mm -hmm. responsible for 70 plus million deaths of yeah. Chinese people, not yeah. of people in different countries. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so it's weird that, you know, it's kind of weird that these people would be celebrating this man. Yeah, mm. yeah, exactly. It is strange. I guess that's what happens if you're brainwashed. Tommy LARPing. Yeah. Um, it's pretty awful, uh, to put it to you this way. It is the celebration of the 130th birthday of mm. Mao Zedong. So, you know, he was born 130 years ago, whatever. So we saw sweeping um, celebrations. We've actually, the good news is we passed one year for every million people he killed. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. there's that. This is really sad. Also, though, you can't really blame these people. They just don't know. No. They don't know. That's what propaganda does to you. Mm. That's what brainwashing does to you. You have a tyrant who literally is responsible for 
a huge amount of your population dying of starvation and whatnot, right? It's pretty wild, but we don't have, like, there's weirdos out there that celebrate Lenin and Stalin and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. But we don't have Lenin and Stalin on current money. We don't have Hitler on money. We don't have Pol Pot notes, you know, in no. Cambodia right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. how weird is it that Mao is on the money and still revered, but he's... He, in terms of death count, he's at the top. He's yeah. the top ranked dictator of all time of disgusting, horrid deaths. Yeah, he is. And yet we're here watching people celebrate. And I get it. They don't know, right? Yeah. But the fact that the government still latches on to this as uh, an opiate of the masses, right, to get people all riled up for the, the pride of China, it's pretty nuts to me. I saw people putting out posts celebrating Mao as the reason why China has grown so so quickly and uh, you know the economy and everything but actually it was only after Mao died and Deng Xiaoping took over that China actually started to get any kind of wealth they were very poor before that happened Mao Zedong dr drove China into the dirt yeah it's 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 he's always celebrated as the creator of the new China that mm. and that's why China is where it is today but he he reduced China to lower than sub-saharan african G gdp per person yeah he lowered China to the level of being so impoverished it was at the bottom of the entire world yeah that's not the that's not what people are celebrating no right? they, they have this this very unrealistic completely rewritten idea of history yeah and they see him as a great leader who lifted China out of you know a bad situation and made China great, but he wasn't. He he plummeted China into a wreck. He mm. made China into a country that lost most of its culture. Yes, it he burned did, destroyed it to the, the ground. Yeah, the, he destroyed the culture. All of the temples and all, all the, the intellectuals. Texts, yeah, all the intellectuals had to go work on the farm, or, or they die. were executed, or whatever. Very bad man. Absolutely horrible. Um, one thing that he's very well known for, though, is his swimming prowess. <laughs> okay? Seriously, and I'm not even joking about that. Well, I, I, I just want Please to yeah, explain. Because I know a lot of this history. Yes, go uh, ahead. I, I read a lot of books about Mao, and I read in one one in particular. Uh, written, poor you. <laughs> well, I was interested. <laughs> sure, sure. So it's a big part of modern China. Of course, of course. Um, and it's fascinating to understand how someone, one man, can command that many millions of people with mm. un- <clears throat> fettered like devotion and then still murder them yes and then they still follow him it's yeah it's crazy is, right? it is crazy yeah um so i was reading his doctor's uh autobiography or not autobiography uh, about mao and it was interesting because it's one of the only realistic accounts of chairman mao because he was so paranoid about letting anyone get close to him except he was so narcissistic that he cared about his doctor because he he confided in his doctor because his doctor is the one who's keeping him alive yeah so his doctor knew everything right and his doctor talked about how he got this fascination with swimming, and he came up with this brilliant marketing idea, really, to propel his image into godlike status. Be like, look, I'm going to swim in all the major rivers of China, yeah. in a country where a lot of people don't swim. Yeah. Right? And, I mean, it's true, though. People mm -hmm. don't swim in China. Like, very, if you took a percentage yeah, of the population, yeah, less than very the few, place. the percentage compared to most other places, yeah. So... His doctor was first and foremost concerned not at the safety of, of it in terms of like drowning, mostly was concerned at the water quality because these rivers had been so, even back then, had been so destroyed and so polluted and so full of heavy metals and so full of awful, awful, dangerous bacteria. And Mao just wouldn't listen to him. He just didn't believe in this kind of stuff. This is the kind of guy that, this is the guy that didn't use toothpaste. He yeah. switched with tea. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. He didn't believe in time. He would wake up whenever he wanted to and he consumed mostly pork belly, right? Like yeah. this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. This guy was not a hygienic guy and he said so he didn't care. So he would go to these horrifically disgusting rivers and just float around and inspired yeah millions across the entire country to think that he was this handsome athletic man yes that was able to swim you know to his heart's content with no worry in the world and inspired this is one positive inspired lots of millions of chinese people to learn yeah, how to I was, swim yeah i was going to say that was the one positive thing that came out of all of this is he actually inspired people to get into the water and swim yeah and this sounds very strange guys but having lived in china for yeah. 14 years and i used to teach kids adults everything in between and I used to very often ask a classroom full of people, like, how many of you guys can swim? And out of a class of 20, maybe three could swim. And I'm yeah, not it's, even it's, joking. It's, it's in just, the lower percentages. It's really crazy the amount of people that can't swim in China. So he, for a short period in China's history, people actually started to swim. Yes. Anyway, but when we say swim, I think yeah, it's a that's... misrepresentation <laughs> because I've got some footage of him actually swimming here. <laughs> See what you did there.
I mean, this is, this is not swimming. That is not swimming. I like the toilet sounds you put in there. Because well, he looks like a turd. You know what I mean? Like with a, a floater. You know what I mean? He's literally a floater. Let's go back. Let's just see it one more time. His amazing prowess. This is the guy who inspired China to swim. Let's get us out of there for a second here. <laughs> Original audio. Yes. <laughs> it's like a floundering. It's a video of a burial at sea. <laughs> this is what's considered swimming. It's just the, the fact is that he's he like half. No, he's not naked. No. He's just used to wear like white. No, it short, was almost like, like skin color. Yeah, because they started out white, but you know when you wear white for too long, you don't yeah, wash it. It becomes yeah, like a brownie skin yeah. color. Yeah, but I mean that that like lame attempt of like. It's like a floundering dead fish that you want to put out of its misery, you know, when you yeah. see in the water. Yeah. Anyway, just uh, had to throw that in there because if you were to believe Chinese propaganda, this is a godlike being who's just amazing There's and could do everything. There's a under the water holding him up. <laughs> <laughs> Probably is. People <laughs> sacrificing themselves. So they, they die one by one, but they form a chain just to keep him up. <laughs> anyway. They call that stroke the dying fish stroke. Yeah, I, I'd say. Anyway. Moving on from from that, uh, here's a little just a, refre a history refresher. This, you'll you know, see this this graphic stats. goes around a lot. It's like but my dictator or whatever. Yeah. But it's true mm -hmm. though. Uh, do you want to read out some of these I would. stats? I would like to look at these. Each blood drop here is the uh, one million people that this dictator killed. Okay. Right? Yeah. So we have uh, all the way over at one point one million deaths was the least. But when you get up towards the more recognizable folk that you yes. might know. Uh, Hitler had 17 million in his pocket, and Joseph Stalin had 23 million. And Mao just dwarfs everyone. Yeah, Mao's just like the worst. <laughs> yeah, and yet everybody in the world is Hitler is a bad man. Yes. Why is why is the same contempt not uh, you know? Well, I feel like the average person Mao. does think Hitler and Mao were both bad. But the problem I think I have is that those <laughs> countries, even Russia, which is a very authoritarian country, is not primarily celebrating stalin anymore right no that's true I, my problem with the china thing is that yes the average person in the world think mao, thinks mao is bad of course they do apps positive not, not if you're school. chinese though not if you're chinese yeah. and that's the problem i have is they've maintained yeah. this godlike status with one of the worst men that ever lived true it's nuts it is nuts anyway that lovely enlightening uh wonderful <laughs> segment over we thought we'd show you what people like to do for fun in the um this Rural countries. Can we be side. upfront about why we're showing this clip? Wow. <laughs> Hashtag the, the sky, sky don't, don't lie. lie. Anyway, everybody's got to have fun. It's an itch. <laughs> Everybody, yeah, have fun tonight. Yeah. Dude's a branch manager. <laughs> he is a branch manager. Gonna, it does look fun. Actually. I think he's going to branch off into other activities. <laughs> It looks fun, though. Yeah, that does look fun. Do you see someone gulu gulu gun <laughs> Yeah, yeah somebody, somebody went for a, a little roll down the hill over there. Uh, yeah. I, I'll teach you a fun fun little uh, colloquial Chinese sound is to roll. You know, we say like maybe look. Like, yeah, so in the, Chinese it's gulu gulu gulu. Yeah, gulu gulu. Yeah. Gulu gulu gun xiao lai means you're, you're rolling down. You're rolling yeah, down. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, um, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> It did look fun. I do think they could have picked a thicker tree. They could have. <laughs> Guys, let's move on to yes. our sponsor for today. Okay. Yes. And we're going to be talking about AG1. And they've got a brand spanking new URL for you to visit. Yes. And it's it's uh, one that directly goes to us. So mm -hmm. that's how you can support the channel as well. Correct. Um, so taking care of your health isn't always easy, but it should at least be simple. That's why for the last year, I've been drinking AG1 every day. You too. Mm -hmm. No exceptions. It's just one you scoop. You could say we. I could have said we. <laughs> one scoop mixed in water once a day, every day, and it makes me feel energized, focused, nourished. All of the things that I didn't feel like before I started drinking AG1. Yeah. And that's because each serving of AG1 delivers my daily dose, our daily dose, of vitamins, minerals, pre- and probiotics, and more. It's a simple, powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. And I'll tell you what, we noticed something before we were we were doing this little i forgot to mention this the last time we were doing this little fad where we're like remember i would bring our multivitamins and we were, was like we can't forget to take these sure. before our lunch you know mm -hmm. we would do that every day yep and trying to get healthy trying yeah. to get healthy and the thing is what i noticed was it was so much easier instead of divvying up all those different supplements and iron and this and that it was so much easier to 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 use ag1 
Yeah. It was more tasty and we could drink it with our meal. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's just it's fantastic. Good. Convenient. Um, convenient too. We've also noticed a huge improvement in our health and energy levels. Correct. Um, it's just been a, a boon to us. Yeah. Uh, and we also really love that the company um, backs us and we back them too. Uh, if there's one product I had to recommend to elevate your health, it's AG1. And that's why we've partnered with them for so long. Yep. So if you want to take ownership of your health, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get free one-year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash ADV. That's our new URL. That's drinkag1.com forward slash ADV. Yeah, so go to that one now. Mm -hmm. It's not that the old one won't work, but use that one instead. Yeah, whoops. I went out ahead a little bit. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. So drinkag1.com slash ADV. Uh, help support the channel and take your health back. Correct. Yeah. Thank Link's you, AG1. Below. And let's move on to the next segment of the show, everybody, which is the big soft power hour. Now, you're all here because the title of this video is that something has leaked from China and it's pretty devastating and China's trying incredibly hard to stop it. Yeah. And you guessed it. Maybe you didn't, but if you did guess it, it's got to do with the economy sucking hard. Yeah, it's actually beyond oh. that. It's like... Oh. Sorry. Wow. <clears throat> I'm all over the place here. That was fun. Yeah. That was really fun. Mm. Yeah. You kind of like brought everyone back in. I hope so. Smacked them a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So um, why didn't you take this away? So this all started, and this is fascinating. This got way more fascinating the more I looked into this. Yeah, it's not It's not like it just uh, this is in the news. This is... No, yeah. this is crazy. <laughs> like we compiled, both of yeah, us have been yeah. doing a lot of research and we compiled a lot of Chinese sources mm -hmm. and we brought them together with the English reporting and it, we found a lot of holes in this little story. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> oh, this is fascinating. So this all started with this rumor that was going around mm -hmm. on Weibo. Yeah. And on Weibo, which is Chinese micro blogging platform, it's kind of like Twitter. To yeah, be it's honest. it's like Twitter. Yeah, it's like, it's like Twitter, Twitter, but you can type longer stuff. Yeah, yeah, like you can have this, you know, a little bit more content in it. So what happened was there was a rumor going around that if you said anything about the Chinese economy being like, oh, maybe it's not going to grow, is I'm not talking about like devastatingly bad stuff. Yeah, it's if you just kind of bad mouth it if you yeah. downplay it if you say it's not doing well oh maybe it's gonna you know take a little downturn maybe yeah. we're heading into some sort of recession oh what's going on with this property bubble right if you say anything like this yeah <clears throat> there were rumors that are now substantiated that you were getting private inbox messages from weibo yeah right saying not to badmouth the economy and some people were calling bs on this they're like yeah, that like, sounds nah, like a rumor nonsense. like that's ridiculous yeah, that's not true we talk about the economy all the time yeah right but let's see what happened okay i'll get a smaller it again. started a couple weeks ago right <clears throat> it turned into something real big mm. what happened was uh it was substantiated finally when a um a financial times china uh a journalist yeah named jeff lee uh he had posted something Right? Yeah, these are translations that we translated yes. from the Chinese. And he said in his uh, in his mm -hmm. in his post, he says, "As a financial blogger, I received a private reminder from the from the platform, just like a little maid secretly <laughs> whispering to me, Master, please don't seek death.' <laughs> <laughs> Meaning, what that actually means is like it's like warning you, like yeah. don't don't talk about this, yes. or you're gonna die, you're in trouble, right? Yes. So this came from Weibo Finance, the official accounts, Weibo Finance and Weibo Stocks." So again, this is like Twitter sending you a message or yes, YouTube like the sending official, you a message. Yeah, yeah. the official uh, platform. Yeah. And it says, hello, teacher. Uh, please be sure to pay attention to the standards of speech when posting in the near future and do not post any comments that badmouth the economy. Thank you for your cooperation. Now imagine, mm -hmm. imagine the biggest social media platform in a country yeah. reaching out to you privately saying, don't talk about what's real. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Don't post the news. Mm -hmm. It's nuts, right? It is nuts. So <laughs> this is what happened. And of course, they remove the posts. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. they'll remove your of post. Course, of and course. then they send you a private message. Yes. Hey, listen, don't talk about this. But then people that were talking about them getting these messages were getting removed. Yes. So it created this little quick firestorm about people being like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Right? What are you actually talking about? Right? Mm, yeah. So it actually turns out that it, it blew up into something so, so, so much bigger. Yeah. What happened was it it started as a little thing about like don't talk smack about the economy, mm -hmm. but then this guy right, he is a a, a very influential uh, economist. Yes. Right. Oh, sorry, a business journalist. Right. Mm -hmm. He talks about China's economic problems, economic futures, 
he actually posts this article. His name's Wu Xiaobo, right? Yeah. Uh, back in the day, they banned this guy, right? Mm -hmm. When did he post it? Uh, it was a while ago. What he did was he compared China's economic problems to the Great Depression. Okay. So then this follow-up thing happened where this other guy who is part of this like securities company, mm. right, posts this article that's actually pretty positive about China's economic <laughs> forecast, which is right. crazy. Mm -hmm. But the headline in, the, in the, the beginning of it says that studies show, based on data, that about over 900 million people, so that's over 70% of China's population, yeah. is living on less than 2,000 RMB per month, right? Yeah. So it's like 280 bucks or something, right? Yeah. This caught on like wildfire because so many people were sympathizing with it. They're like, yeah. I, that's how much I make, right? Yeah. And I live in a major city, right? Mm -hmm. This isn't just some rural impoverished person, right? Sure. This goes beyond what China's former... Uh, Premier Li Keqiang was saying, this is over 900 million people are living on less than 2,000 RMB. So this month. is Chinese researchers put this data we'll, out there. We'll talk about that in a second. No. <clears throat> yeah. So going forward, um, this was removed, right? This but, was trending. It was number one, yeah. but it was removed, all yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Here's the guy. So he posts this, and it has, it has some, some data and some graphs showing this stuff. It's substantiated, right? Mm -hmm. This is all signed off on. There's nothing in his report that is in a uh, new finding but he brought it to the masses and was able to put it out there and people respect him because it's his opinion mm -hmm. this isn't some little research blog now this is a massive piece of data that he's proven to the world right and anecdotally um i'm sure you can agree with me that we can corroborate this anecdotally when Absolutely. you travel around the whole of china and you see how mm. people live mm. Outside of the big flashy cities, you know, of course, if you're in downtown Shanghai, Beijing, Nanning, any of these bigger cities, you're going to see the richest people of China yes. in that area because yeah. they'll move to those areas. Yeah. But the majority of the people live in the city on the outskirts or in the poorer areas in the normal areas and then out in the rural countryside. And those people, when you look at the way they live, I can absolutely agree that they're living on 2,000 or less. Oh, yeah. A month. Much less in some yeah. cases. We'll, so, we'll cover yeah, that in a yeah, second. Yeah, we um, so this guy's name is uh, uh, Li Xunlei, mm -hmm. and he is the chief economist at Zhongtai Securities, a big, big, huge group. And so that's why people respect this. That's why it went to number one on trending on Yeah, on because Weibo. he's not just some quack or a little blogger or something. No. He's, this is his profession. Now, it, later in the article, mm -hmm. so obviously people are talking about things like, well, China stopped reporting joblessness amongst youth, right? Yeah. They mm -hmm. stopped. There's all these bad indicators of showing China's economy having a huge downturn, yeah. right? Yeah. But... He goes on the article to say, if we have some some reformation here, if we're able to reform certain things, certain yeah. you know uh, principles of our economy that got us to this point, yeah, if we're able to bring that back, we could probably double China's GDP by twenty thirty five. It's actually a positive sure. article. It's sure. just saying we are in a bad time yeah. right now. We need to face it down. This is the current back. situation. Yes. This is what we can do to improve it. Right, that type of thing. So there's nothing wrong about. But what it's he the did. fact that he stated the facts of the current situation that got him into trouble, got everyone into trouble, and basically created this huge firestorm. Yeah, so just some some graphics uh, we threw together here. Just keep going. Okay. Um, this was this was another uh, person that was posting his the contents of his article. This mm -hmm. is how much it spread, right? Yes. So even when they removed his article, it yeah. was being posted Correct. around different platforms. And this is what you'd get. This is what you got uh, after a while. It says, in accordance with relevant laws, regulations, and policies, the content of this topic cannot be displayed. So they really have been working around the clock. Oh, yeah, to hide this to information information because it is it's a big bombshell and here's the thing china in china the government is very good at keeping people sort of in little bubbles mm -hmm. okay um very localized so you sitting there in your village you know everybody that you know is earning very little money right yes all your cousins and all your other people even the ones that have gone to the city you know they're not earning a lot of money but you know, you keep seeing the propaganda on how prosperous China yeah. is. And so in your mind, you think, oh, it's probably just us, our little areas not doing very well, or our little group of people aren't doing very well. But when you realize that the majority of the country is in the same situation as you, yeah. it changes the picture. Yeah. You know, yeah. then you wake up and you're like, hang on. So actually the whole country is kind of poor. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I like what, you, what you're getting at there. Like, Everyone can feel like they're they're at the bottom or something, but then when you see something like this, it corroborates the fact that no, everyone else is poor like me. Yeah, right. The major over seventy percent of people are poor like me. Exactly. So you don't feel like one because when you watch CGTN or when you watch Xinhua or yeah. any like state media, you're gonna go in there as a Chinese person and feel real 
bad about yourself because sure. you're looking at your country with this veneer, this mm. state veneer on it. Yeah. And you're like, everyone's rich, everyone's succeeding, except for poor little me. Yeah. That's not true at all, right? No, everybody else is in the same boat, yeah. you know? Yeah, this is not like a negative yeah. piece of news. It's just camaraderie here, right? Yeah, exactly. You go into the city and you'll see a Ferrari in uh, you yeah. know, Shanghai or something, and you're like, well, you know, this our country's obviously doing very well, you know, and we're very rich, but not me, you know? I'm just from a poor background. Yeah. Actually, no, it's everyone's no. like that. Everyone's like that. So yeah. what they did was not just this. They mm -hmm. didn't just remove this. They actually removed, they disabled the hashtag. So the yeah, entire hashtag was removed. They do that all the time. And that's that's how it got to the top, right? I just yeah. wanted to show you this graphic we put mm -hmm. together. So 70% of people are living on less than $282 per month. I don't care where you're from. I want you to think about what your situation is so you can compare this. Because yeah. what China's been doing and something that we've been trying to show people the reality of, because it's not fair to real Chinese people. No is to think that China has superseded where you're from, has superseded your standards, has actually not only superseded where you're from, but it's better than America. It's better than the American way of life. It's better sure. than everything, right? And the yeah, reality- 3,000 years in the future. Yes. Look at Chongqing at night, right. cyber, cyberpunk city, all this nonsense, trying to show you, look at our GDP keeps growing. We're so amazing. 70% of mm -hmm. people in China, the majority are living on less than $282 per month, mm -hmm. okay? You can factor in any cost of living you want. By the way, yep. China's cost of living is skyrocketing it's right super, now. It's much higher than when we were living there. Yes. Yeah, like the you could spend a couple bucks on a meal back when we were there. You can't do that anymore, right? Yep. Food prices are skyrocketing. The pro property bubble has led to the situation where no one is going to ever have a, a house. You know how it's bad in America and people are like, young people are never going to own houses and stuff. You got to exacerbate that times a factor of 10 in China yep. because you're talking about a low quality concrete box made of poor materials that could potentially fall down. Yep. That doesn't hold its value because it's in a bubble, an artificial bubble in a country that has a billion too many houses, mm -hmm. can't sell them because of the overinflated prices. And you can't own it anyway. You only lease it for 70 years. And, yes, mm -hmm. and the low salaries don't allow it. Yeah. So you have this dystopia. Yeah. And this is the reality. And this guy simply just said, this is what we're dealing with. We need to move past this, right? We need to figure out a way to solve this. You know, we have to, again, with the, the real estate thing, um, the, the prices that these apartments demand are mm. high compared to your standards. Mm. I'm talking about a small little like two bedroom apartment in a city like Shenzhen costing over a million US dollars. It doesn't okay? make any sense. It's no sense. Like a tiny rubbish apartment in a crappy building costing over a million US dollars and you are earning less than $282 a month and you're 70% of the population. How do you afford that? You don't. You can't. You don't. Yeah. You just don't. It's not possible. So moving on, mm. this gets so much more interesting. Yeah. Because according to state security in China, so this is state, this is how bad it got, right? Yeah, it's not state just security. not just the censorship yeah, board, the yeah. state security, MSS, yeah. got involved. They're like, we are so concerned about this news, right? Mm -hmm. This They actually put this uh, statement out when they first started uh, that Weibo thing where it yes. said like, don't... Don't post, don't badmouth yeah, the economy. Yeah, don't badmouth the economy. Right? So then the, so basically, so what they say? like the CIA version in China says, um, <clears throat> okay, according to state security in China, news of economic downturn is implied to be from foreign sources. They always have to blame the outside, don't they? Yeah. So you can take us out. There, so sure. I'll get us out of there. Their essence is to use various false narratives to construct a discourse trap and cognitive trap of China's decline in order to continue to cast doubt on the system and the path of socialism with Chinese characteristics. So that's that's the excuse, right? So it's not that the, the economy actually isn't doing very well no. or that, you know, there are lots of poor people in China. No, it's foreign forces are Correct. trying to screw you over. You know what I found so fascinating what? about this? Mm -hmm. Is that that's all well and good. Like, that's a good mm -hmm. way to placate people. They're like, okay, it's just foreign bad news. Trying yeah, the to make black China hand of bad. foreign yeah. people, you know? It's always that, right? They always mm -hmm. say the black hand of the U.S. Yes. Meaning, like, the U.S. is meddling and creating false stories. So when, when the, your government puts a statement out like this, it can placate a certain part of the population, right? Yes, yeah. I found a little problem with this, though. And you can go to the next slide here. I found it a big problem. Okay, what's the, what's the big problem? The source actually wasn't from foreign sources at all. No. Where was it from? Well, it was from Chinese experts. And it was from the Beijing Normal University. What a shame, <laughs> guys. So It you sounds had... so dumb saying a normal university. So it's not abnormal. 
But no, it's but seriously, it's a, it's a very high level. That's just the way they, they name their universities. There. So the source of... It wasn't this source, was it? My source is that I made it the f*** up. Definitely not that no. source. No, well, that no. was the Chinese state source. That was the, that was <laughs> the Ministry of State Security. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what happened was... Mm -hmm. The state security apparatus in China is put telling people, yeah. "Don't worry, this is this is not true. This is foreign lies. The economy is doing well. Like this, the the painting the tales of China's downturn. This is all bad foreign lies. That's the yeah. implication. Yeah, yeah. But guys, that article that we that was just pulled from Weibo, the one that was trending, that yeah. said that seventy percent of Chinese people are living on less than two hundred eighty dollars a month." Mm -hmm. That's from Beijing Normal University. That's that's literally state research. It's yes. from. Not from Taiwan. No. It's not from America. Nope. This is from Beijing. This is from the CCP. The CCP came up with the statistic, guys. I know. It's, it's crazy. Their internal, it's their internal research firm, basically. Mm -hmm. So you, <laughs> yeah, you have this situation where they're just, they're just wrong. To go back to this, $282 a month, 70% of Chinese people, stat came from China. Yep. This is a Chinese stat from Chinese researchers. And... It's from the Chinese government. Yep. The Beijing Normal University gives statistics to the CCP. Yeah. So they're trying to hide their own research. You know, we were talking about how Chinese censorship was getting so out of control. It's got it's getting so bad that even reasonable research within China that the CCP endorses and funds is getting pulled. censored and pulled. Yeah, because if it doesn't line up with their narrative and what they want, then it's just not right. <laughs> it's it's crazy. Yeah, it absolutely but is. I have another problem. What's that? You remember this? Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember this. China eradicates extreme poverty. Mm. 98.99 million Chinese in rural areas helped out of poverty from 2012 to 2020. Isn't you, it 800 million? I keep hearing that no, number, no, no. 800 so million. That's 800 million Chinese people over the CCP's history. Were oh, out of, so out of this. Xi Jinping's yeah. history, the mm -hmm. current leader of China, he lifted the rest out of, it's called yeah. extreme poverty. True. Extreme poverty is like the poverty. Well, like when you don't earn anything. I'll, I'll tell you in a second. I have an actual stat. But <laughs> it's basically equivalent to mm -hmm. the U.S.'s standard of poverty would be China's standard of extreme poverty. It's just what they call like the lowest level, right? Okay, the right. poverty line, we the can poverty call it. poverty line, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this was on CGTN, Chinese state media. Remember, it says, happening now. Farewell to poverty. So basically, the yeah. leader of China got up on, on a, in front of a podium and said, there's no more poverty. And what actually happened, we covered in the past, was he just made it illegal to say that there's poverty. Anymore. That's right. Yeah. What is the poverty line, by the way? So the poverty line in China is $282 per year. Yeah. Per year. Per year. Do you That's guys, the do you guys hear that? poverty line. Yeah. So when Xi Jinping was like, there's no one in poverty anymore, that means if someone's earning $283 per year, they're not in poverty anymore. You know, they've been lifted out of extreme yeah, poverty. Yeah, so the, yeah, that extreme poverty is $282 per year. So when he says that that's been eradicated, by the way, it probably hasn't. No. But no. that's like such an outlandish figure. Yeah, I just had to put that to figure celebrate. out there because just think about that, guys. That Take $282 and just in your mind, in your mind, try and think about how you could survive a year on that. Okay, because if you try to divide it, by however many days are in the year, you're talking less than a dollar value per day. You know? Yes, you absolutely are. I actually broke it down a little. Even oh, you more. did? I, I wanted to compare it to the U.S.'s figure because if China's going to play with the big boys all the time, be like, yeah, we're better than the U.S. and we have a higher standard of living mm -hmm. and the U.S. Mm -hmm. sucks and everyone's dying, 12% of Americans live in poverty, right? So yes. we looked at that original figure that China was throwing around with that Beijing Normal University statistic that 70% of people are living on less than 200 something dollars per, per month, right? Yeah. The poverty rate in the U.S. is 12% of Americans are living on less than $1,240 per month, right? There's yeah. This is not even in the same realm. We no. can't even have the same conversation. No, no. These are not the same problems, <clears throat> right? Yeah. It's not even close. No, that's not close. Um, you look at even just like per person GDP is like 16000 Like if you average the whole country of China and then adjust it, right? Yeah. How much stuff costs? It's like $16,000 per year, yeah. right? America's 70 or 80,000, right? It's not yeah. in the same conversation. No, it's not in the same. But China likes to pretend like that it is. Yeah. Right? I just, I still can't get over the 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 whole $283, a, uh, $282 a year. That's the extreme poverty line. Yeah. So yeah, remember, 70% of people are living on 282 per month per or month, less. Yeah. And then to go, go to the next slide, break it down even further. The extreme poverty line in China that Xi Jinping said was declared, was eradicated is $24 per month. Yeah. $24 per month. 
I, it's very difficult to survive on that. But if you visited the rural parts of China, you see people that definitely survive on that. Oh, yeah. You I see, know it like, sounds crazy, see... but there are people we saw... You know, there's people that don't have electricity and running water. No, no, they just live off the land. Yeah. So, you know, you, li spend much. you live off the land. The, the only spending you do is to get, if you have to buy seeds or whatever, and I guess. Or when the local officials come to hose you down and freaking, we yeah. ran into that a lot. Yeah. Local they, officials yeah. come and, and get extortion from sure. people. They do all sorts of nonsense. But, you know, people have to literally pass a donkey around, yeah. you know, yeah. in the rural areas and yeah. rent donkeys from yeah. each other to do the plowing and things, you know, and for a number of days. It's 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 popular. Um, just before we get into that, I just wanted to sure. read a couple things. Uh, okay, there's yeah, a couple good it. quotes. Okay, there, you this read got, some quotes? This got some backlash. <clears throat> sure. Some nasty, nasty backlash from netizens and other oh, researchers. Dude, dude, like I posted an, an article on Twitter about this, mm -hmm. the, the, the close to a billion people in poverty and the amount of Wumao that attacked me over it were crazy. Yeah. And at first they're like, US propaganda, US propaganda, yeah. it's all American lies. That's, that's MSS. Yeah, that's and then so. you're like, uh, no, these are Chinese researchers. Yeah. Then they're like, well, it doesn't matter because cost of living is low in China, so you don't need to earn that much. I'm like, stop changing your damn story, first of all. And no, it's not okay because cost of living is not that low in China. I lived in China and I right. did not live like one of those spoiled foreigners who goes to shop in those fancy no. places and goes to fancy restaurants. I lived like a local. I went to local crappy, yeah. very yeah. low level wet markets. And right. I went to the, you know, the local supermarkets yeah. and I lived in the local areas. And even then the cost of living, although way cheaper than say in America and places like that was still not that low. No. You know? No. What I want to say sure. is that from the other side of things, the backlash I'm talking about is not from Wu Mao. It's from people that think this is ridiculous <clears throat> that this was censored. Yeah. The average Chinese person is mad that this was pulled. Yeah. They're not trying to cover it up. That's he, You're talking about like the state apparatus yes. to shut down the conversation. Yeah, they're trying to right? shut down the conversation. Um, mm. So this is what this one guy said, Ji Feng said, his okay. data and data used by Li Keqiang all come from survey data of Beijing Normal University. As long as the article is downloaded, most of what it says is true. Three years after the epidemic, the economic downturn has become a common problem for everyone. Yeah. So this is not a person that hates China. This no. is a Chinese person that's like, why is this a problem, right? Yeah, yeah. My personal experience, my niece lives in Chongqing. Now her monthly salary after graduating from college, this is a college graduate, a professional. Mm -hmm. And Chongqing, you know, cyber city, 3,000 years wealthy, ahead. Wealthy city. Mm -hmm. Is now only 2,000 yuan per month. And the rent goes up to 1,000 yuan. So her father has to pay her 1 to 2,000 yuan every month just to stay afloat, right? Yeah. But the internship, when it's over, you'll be unemployed and the economy is out of control. Everyone knows it, mm -hmm. right? Um, this person, I thought this was interesting. This person said, the economy is the second largest in the world. And this is something that's hard to understand as China's got the second largest economy in the world, but people think that that makes it a rich country. Mm. Just because your economy of your country is big doesn't mean you have more money. Yeah, you it's because of the factories and creating everything for the rest of the world. Yes, and the, yes. the, the sheer vastness of the population. Right, when, and everything the, that's being done. Yeah, when you when you divide it by the population, it's a poor country. Yeah. right? you can't just say, "Oh, we're." It's not the same, right? It's American like, is three mil, three pretty easy. People. If you've got a a family household, they got a big wheel of cheese. Yeah, and there's three family members. They got a lot of cheese. Yeah. But you take a, a big wheel of cheese that's double that size, you put it in a household with 50 people, all of a sudden you can say, our house has more cheese yeah. than your house, but yeah. the people inside don't. No, exactly. You know? Well said. Uh, the economy is the second largest in the world. As a result, the average monthly income of 964 million people is less than 2,000 yuan. How can we increase consumption and stimulate economic growth? Everyone knows the effective demand is insufficient and social confidence is not high. The reason is simple. There is no money. And that is something that the, the government is so, so desperate to try to hide right now. Yeah. Because it's this kind of situation where China knows that if enough people kind of get wind of this, then more confidence is lost. But what they don't understand is that if you have a normal country with normal freedom of speech and normal journalism and normal everything where people can talk about stuff, it doesn't have to get to this point, right? If you let things in capitalism take over and trade and open trade and open markets and open open speech, open platforms, then you don't get to this situation. No. You don't. But when you have to control the narrative from day one and it gets worse and worse and worse, you end up shutting down your own research facilities and your own data points. That's right. And it's, it's just terrible because... 
this is the reason why foreign investors are fleeing yes. China is because they keep cr clamping down on things. They keep mm -hmm. just being d d totalitarian, d sorry, totalitarian dictators. Yeah. You know, you don't want to deal with that. If you're a company and you want to, you know, invest and build a factory and all this, you don't want there to be suddenly a law that's enacted that prevents you from doing business. Yeah. You don't want there to be a law that suddenly seizes all your assets because right. you said. Uh, free Tibet once in a tweet like 20 years ago. You yeah. know, you don't want to have to deal with a country like no, that. And no. that's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So you had some uh, video. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to compare. You're talking about the economy of China. And um, I think it's fair to compare the whole idea of tofu dreg buildings. Yeah. Actually, it's part of it because yeah. the whole property bubble is related to this. Yeah. So if you take a look. This is a brand new building. And that's okay? the base of the building. Brand new building just being completed. You can hear construction in the background. Brand new building looks nice and shiny on the outside. But if you look at the foundations over here, um, there's massive cracks all the way along. Too crazy. Yeah, I mean, who knows? But it just shows the quality. Um, and this is like the Chinese economy. What's presented to the world is the shiny exterior. But if you could peel away the wall, for instance, and look at the actual construction yeah. quality underneath, this is what happens. Shortcuts are taken. Yeah. You know, it's a lie. And this is just a great analogy for the Chinese economy. Look at this stuff. Yeah, this is a guy who's obviously paid his hundreds of thousands of RMB, his millions of RMB, whatever it is, to get this apartment, and it's just nearing completion. He goes to inspect it, and he finds out that everything's crumbling. Don't pick it, that said R.C. Ross. <laughs> yeah, don't pick it. It might just fall down. Yeah. But, I mean, that, that's that's the Chinese economy for you there. You know, the government has to go out there and warn people not to badmouth yeah. it, and that's the facade. You know, you have to only say good things. You're only allowed to show the cities at night, by the way, because the sky looks crap during the day I with think, all the lights on. I think it's so counterintuitive for the government to try and send these private messages be like don't talk about this mm. like that's so what does that not show you that there's some alarm bells yeah this is normal people that's They're your freaking house being facetious but like yeah it's a serious problem <laughs> so i throw this in there <laughs> yeah, you know Good so I wanted to bring something a bit more personal into all of this, okay? Guys, one reason why we can confidently talk about China the way we do is because we lived and explored the entire country. We lived there yeah. over a decade each. I was 14 years, you were over 10 years, okay? So I'm bringing this back a little bit here to about, when did we film this, 2015? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is 2015. Okay, so then you... I... I'm going to take the volume out because I didn't realize I left volume in there and you have no idea what we could have said. So, you know. I think we were making a vlog, but... Yeah. <laughs> it would have been something nice and very, very pleasant. In fact, I remember that. I remember that. If I put that volume... we I remember us saying, like, look how beautiful the houses are here. I remember that. Yeah, it was actually for it was Because it was different. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, to find the wooden houses in the yeah. rural areas it's is so rare. rare and cool. Anyway... This was in uh, Guizhou, yep. all right? And so we stopped, and then we drove probably, I don't know, like an hour away from here, half an hour drive from here. We stopped on the side of the road, and I remember I spotted this dude holding a rat, okay? Yep. So there he is. Chilling, chilling with his rat. Chilling with a rat, and I was like, that's interesting. So you see I'm zooming in on the rat. I'm like, hmm. And... You know, it's fairly well known that people catch these rats. These are cane rats, right? Mm -hmm. They catch the rats for food, okay? Yeah. And then I th thought there was this very, like, nice scene of this grandmother uh, brushing this this pretty little girl's hair, you know, wearing traditional-type clothing. What I didn't realize is that she's got a rat in her hand, too. Rat in hand. Yeah. Which later, later only did I realize it was in the footage. And I was like, what? 
like imagine growing up and your toy is a rat instead of a doll. Got to do what you got to do. I, I get it. I mean, but it's just very um, like uh, it's it just paints a picture of the real hardships that people have to face. Mm-hmm. You know, in these particular areas. And this is not even the poorest part of China. No. Now, the thing is, because we filmed that in 2015, and I've shown that uh, footage before, I've gotten backlash. People say, that's not Too like old. that anymore. It's, there's no, they're not doing that anymore. You know, China's lifted out of poverty since then, which is absolute bullshit because these clips are from like the last couple of months. Okay. It's still the same. People you got going a hole. out there. What a hole. Look at his hole of rats that he went out to catch to, to eat. Which he will sell or, you know, cook for the Again, family. Not a city rat, but it does show yeah, hardship. It's, it's, a, it's still a rat, okay? Yeah. This dude... We've both eaten these, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I've eaten them on, on a documentary, mm-hmm. yeah. At least I hope mine was a cane rat. I think it was probably just a sewer rat. Mine was a sewer rat. <laughs> okay. Because the his restaurant got busted for <laughs> saying it was pigeon, and it wasn't. <laughs> pigeon rat. Rats of the skies, right? Yeah, I'd, but I was trying to eat pigeon. Yeah, I'm but you... I mean ate... dove. Yeah, okay. Caged yeah. dove. You know, barbecue. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. I ate rats, and this, I saw did, it on the news. <laughs> this guy, by the way, I love, I love his hole. He's got like rats in every pocket. He's got an epic hole. He's like, yeah, it's like, hey, we got some rats here. Got Stuffing some rats in there. His pockets. Literally, this is a new freaking clip. Okay, from this year out of China, mm. probably from like a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so the idea that, again, just bringing a personal back in, the idea that this, the, the scenery that we saw, and don't forget. Um, we didn't leave China that long ago, but the idea that this poverty has suddenly disappeared is bullshit. Yeah. It's still there. Yeah. It's the same. Yeah, I don't, it, but it's been shut down. You can't talk about it. You anymore. just can't talk about it. You can't yeah. show it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I guess it's time for uh, Wu Mao Corner, is it? I believe so. Because I see there's a blank space. So that's, that's what that means. That means it's Wu Mao Corner, guys. You know, that's what that means. Oh, um, however, before we. Uh, do Wu Mao Corner before we get into the act. Actually, you know, this kind of ties in with Wu Mao Corner, I'll be honest with you. What's that? Our Monday show. Oh, yeah. That's right. Let's show you what you missed, guys. Now get it out of here. It's, this is pretty hilarious. By the way, before he starts. <laughs> Three times. <laughs> uh, you got to add mud. You got to add water. <laughs> what is this? this is like supposed to be a TED talk, right? Yeah. Do it or do not trust no! <laughs> I like that. I like how everyone's emotional. You have to try or you die, die trying. trying. <laughs> Drunk, it's okay. Is it? <laughs> wow. <laughs> So to give some explanation yeah. to that, we have a show every Monday. Yeah, a VIP show. Um, and that episode was about um, try hard foreigners, cool guy stories. Cool, cool guys. Yeah, they kind of go to China and they uh, reinvent themselves. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're they're English teachers, but they don't want anyone to know that, yeah. so they make up these fanciful yeah. stories. And whenever they get a chance, they're on stage saying how oh, like they're a special entrepreneur or Wall Street guy or whatever so we covered like <laughs> stories uh, that we know about that and covered some hilarious videos and showed some actual footage yeah. that was that we took in china yeah um, why blurry because we want you guys to go over there and check yeah, it out th- this, this is a this is a vip show that's yeah. kind of private stuff mm-hmm. you can go check it out over there yes. if you want it um uh, it's and, on patreon.com yeah. slash adv podcast if you have the means we'd love to see you there it's super fun it's we just kind of have fun on mondays and cover a topic mm-hmm. and then we have a big q a and people get to vote on the next topic and that type of thing it's always a lot of fun it's the best yeah anyway let's uh let's move on to Wu Mao corner of course this is where we talk about the haters and uh all the nonsense they get up to and this time we've seen a very interesting thing happen in america in florida of all places what do you know what is going on here this is your story well, in Florida, the police arrest three men who allegedly stole hundreds of gallons of used cooking oil worth Whoa, thousands. This sounds familiar. This <laughs> yes. sounds a little bit like Digo, yeah. It does. Uh, you probably know by now that in China, it's very common for people to take oil out of the grease traps in the sewers and the gutters, and then they repurpose it. They basically take used cooking oil, gross sewer oil, and they boil it up and they add things to it and stuff to make it look new again, and then they 
use it for street food and they resell it to restaurants and stuff because you know cooking oil is expensive in china yeah and so if you buy the the gutter oil as it's called yes. you could buy it at like a very low price and so many people use it yeah so this idea of like taking used cooking oil is very common in china i love that this is florida man it is florida man florida but, men. It's, but yeah florida man but these are you know, Chinese nationals that came to Florida still to, Florida man. to do it. Yeah, to do this in China. Doesn't matter in, who you are, US, you're still yeah. a Florida man. Yeah, exactly. So Florida pre police arrested three men and charged them with grand theft after they allegedly targeted several restaurants and stole their cooking oil. The Port Orange Police Department said officers worked with DARPRO corporate security specialists on December 16th to track down Three individuals suspected of stealing cooking oil. The three men, police said, were targeting multiple restaurants in the area during overnight hours. The men were seen in a large box truck outfitted with a pump to allegedly support their operation in which they would back the truck up, roll out the hose, and pump the used cooking oil. I'm having a hard time thinking as why this is, even matters, but we, we talked about this a little bit. Yeah. Um, number one, I suspect that this is probably for diesel fuel. Yes, because you can then they're not going to make gutter oil to sell back to the restaurants here. No, you can make diesel fuel, and you know there are other applications that you can use this used cooking yes. oil for, yeah. like for molds mm -hmm. and things. So they will be selling it. So they're basically stealing the oil to sell it, to yes. process and sell it. Yeah. So, um, Florida, uh, Florida police uh, said on December 16, about 330 gallons were stolen. Though it's believed that they may be part of a large organization responsible for thousands of dollars worth of stolen oil in the area. Ultimately, police arrested 49-year-old Ri Lin of St. Yeah, John's, yeah. Florida, 35-year-old Yi Ching Chen of wherever, and 42-year-old uh, Leo of Flushing in New York. All three men were charged with grand theft. Oh, and, that's, that's a big theft. Yeah, so it's, it's it's fairly grand. <laughs> this you know? is a grand theft. Yes, it's grand. You put on all you put on your finest <laughs> yes, clothes yes, and you go yes. steal those. This is a grand theft, not petty like those other ones. It's um, interesting, they're all the way from New York or whatever. Yeah, going all the, all the oh, way. Two there. of them were Florida men. Yeah. Anyway, one um, thing that I thought was interesting is police <laughs> added that Lynn was arrested last year in Flagler County, Florida, for a similar incident. Now, why so, would we cover this? <laughs> There's a reason we'd cover this because this yeah. is something you'll see constantly in China. So it was yeah. interesting to see it in the I US. Just, I just found it really interesting that the uh, the whole gutter oil, yeah, you know, experience has been exported to other countries. It's nuts. Yeah. It, I never expected it. No, a that's taste of home. Yeah, it was our home. Yeah, exactly. China's my home. Yeah, you gotta wait. You gotta understand. <laughs> Even better. Yeah. Okay. So moving on from Florida men stealing yeah, it was just oil. A bit of a funny, funny thing. Yeah. Um, we are moving on to our. Sorry, we're going long today. Okay. Uh, we're moving on to talk a little bit about jo our friend Jordan Harbinger. Okay. Jordan's yeah. show. Um, he had an episode which is really, really interesting. And although it wasn't China related, mm -hmm. I thought it was really captivating. Uh, Jordan, again, has some of the best gu guests we've ever had. We've been on a show yeah, multiple no, times. Could definitely recommend a show. Um, he's got a YouTube channel now, so go go over there and, and subscribe to him. Send, tell him that China Show sent, uh, That'd be awesome. sent you. Uh, but basically, he talked to this guy named Oliver Stone about nuclear... Just pause it there. It's about, not, not the movie director, obviously. No. Uh, about nuclear uh, energy. And I thought this was interesting. I've recently been more interested in listening to people talk about things that are a little bit taboo in in public people everyone wants to talk about evs and everything but no one wants to talk about the very very real alternative of nuclear energy and it causes great debate sure now whether you agree with it or not i thought it was a really really tantalizing talk sure um it was i think a lot of people are scared to even kind of buck the system a little bit these days you know what okay. i mean does that make sure. sense uh, he talked about the history of nuclear energy and the political factors that have influenced its usage so mm. obviously politics have had a huge play yeah. in what we find acceptable, right? right. Uh, lessons learned from Fukushima, Chernobyl, and the Three Mile Island, obviously huge pieces of history that we can never forget, mm -hmm. right? How mm -hmm. nuclear companies uh, compare to wind, solar, hydro, and other green uh, energy alternatives, and the influence that the fossil uh, fuel uh, industry wields over energy alternatives of any kind, and what a future fueled by safe and sustainable nuclear power might look like. It's a really good talk. Good. Uh, so go to jordanharbinger.com slash 931. Can you get us out there so people can see yeah, it? Yeah, I did. I did. Okay, cool. And also subscribe to his YouTube channel. All of his stuff is free. 
Yeah, go cool. check it out. It's very, very good. Still has horrible thumbnails of us, which uh, need to change. I didn't change. check today. I didn't check the thumbnail situation. We'll have to that's check. Gotta, that's got to change. Otherwise, <laughs> next time, Revenge. He's got great artists. Revenge is coming. <laughs> you have no idea. Oh, you guys don't know. There's a secret China show, Jordan. We, we're like best friends, but we also beef over yeah. the use of his horrific thumbnails. Yeah, the worst. Makes people look like terrible. He's, insults his guests. Like, <laughs> we won't believe it. You know what I mean? We love him. To death. <laughs> yeah. Jordan, we love you. We know you're listening yeah. to this, but um he does have the best oh, he has a great artist though his mm -hmm. podcast stuff looks great oh yeah no that's great but the like on, his, on the youtube comical. thing it's like what are you doing <laughs> did you specifically comb through for the worst <laughs> frame and then stretch it you know yes and like yes. make the person look like raw pork you know <laughs> i feel like he does that anyway yes. all that aside we've still got worldview to cover yes. guys this is the last segment okay worldview we've got a little something for you here um, and this is where we talk about everything in the world, specifically with regards to China. Yeah. Uh, and let's get it here. So there's and... a new defense minister in China. Okay. Uh, his name is Dong Jun. You guys probably remember that one of them was disappeared. The last guy was disappeared. Well, yeah. He was formally removed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, by Xi's cabinet. Pretty sure you can't find him if you look no, for him now. No, that's the thing. Though. He was formally removed, but he hasn't been with the public eye. Sure. Whatsoever. Um, what does this signify? I think in my mind, this is... Again, another distillation of power. Yeah. I think we're seeing more and more people that were even close to the leadership in the beginning that maybe strayed a little bit more. I think, you know what a good analogy is? Is censoring your own research board. Yeah. Like, you're like, I'm going to give you a million dollars to do this for me. You do exactly what they say, and they're like, you shouldn't have done that. Yeah, it's exactly it's, right. Yeah. It's getting to that point now where the purges have gotten so out of control. Mm. And some other channels have covered this in depth. Uh, but the purges have gotten so out of control now that there's not a whole lot of people left and people that were really close to the leadership that were super close have been pushed aside because they're not they're not in line with the new paranoia <laughs> you know exactly I mean? yeah it's pretty crazy yeah, it's awful it's it's just because they say something you didn't want to hear one morning you know that's yeah, what it, it could is. be that could it's be literally that. that it's like oh I, I don't quite like this tea or something it's like oh really yeah, you know. so that's General Li, uh, Li Shangfu, the new guy, Dong Zhu, and he's actually the former commander of the PLA Navy, the plan. Mm -hmm. um, so the People's Liberation Army Navy, he was the com former commander. So he's a high-level dude that just took this defense minister job. Yeah. We'll see what he does. I mean, this is all... The, what people say is, oh, they're trying to get rid of corruption within the PLA and kind of like bring mm -hmm. the leadership back to the CCP and all this kind of stuff. Okay. Never we'll know. see. Never know. What's going on with this dude? This is actually really interesting. I wish I had made the the uh, text a little bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, this is retired U.S. Uh, I'm going to actually pull it up. <clears throat> Navy so. Admiral James. What's yeah, I want to be able to. I want to okay. be able to uh, read it properly. Give me a sec. Mm -hmm. Because our our monitor is very far. It's very far away. It may as well be far. in a distant galaxy. It might as well yeah. be in a distant galaxy. This is a. So uh, former NATO's former Supreme Allied That's, Commander. That, that is correct. But he had, some, he had a very interesting... I got it here. Uh, retired so, U.S. Okay. Navy Admiral uh, James Ster Stavridis. Yes, what NATO's, it is. Yeah. It sounds like a, like, you know, like a disease or something you get. Like Literally. Doesn't it sound like if you go scratch yourself that's on a piece of metal? That's not a very nice thing to say. I'm sorry, but that's you just like... You want NATO's <laughs> former Supreme <laughs> Allied Commander after you? No, I'm just saying... You Look at this guy. He's decorated to hell. I know, but you scrape yourself on a rusty fence. And say, oh, shit. You better watch out. You might get stravitis. That's tetanus. But it just sounds like one of those things. You know what I'm saying? This. <laughs> let me I'm say sorry, it again. But, yeah. Former Supreme <laughs> Allied yeah. Commander. It's a supremely bad like, condition. Thankfully, he's on our side, I think. <laughs> yeah. He's in the part of NATO, yeah. right? Yeah. Part exactly. of the, the Western allies uh, has said that China will not be ready for a potential war with the U.S. for about ten years. Now this is interesting mm. details. Uh, Stavridis, stop! Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Made the remark. Oh shit! I got Stavridis. Good luck. We're never, never going to interview with <laughs> him. Get a I guess. shot. You know? Way to like shoot down any potential person we could actually interview. He would have uh, been fascinating to talk to. I think. I think we could uh, discuss the origins of his surname. I think we could do that in private. You <laughs> yeah. can do that. Yeah, I'll fine. interview him privately, <laughs> okay. and this will be the Simo show. There we go. And the divorce will happen. Yeah, for that one time. Stavridis yeah. made the remarks during an interview uh, aired this week on the Michael Medved show. After being asked whether tensions centered on the South China Sea territorial disputes could spill over into a new world war, and that's something people have been asking nonstop, right? Yeah. He said that the U.S. and its regional allies have a 10-year grace period. 
uh, to prepare for the possibility of war with China. U.S.-China's relations have been on a knife edge due to military activity in the sensitive waters of the Taiwan Strait by American and regional allies, and China claims sovereignty over the Strait and most of the rest of the South China Sea, in opposition to international maritime laws and the views of nearly every other country mm. in the entire world. Yep. Uh, and this is the quote. Even though China is building a massive fleet, even though they're acting aggressively, they are not ready yet, mm -hmm. he said. If we ended up in a war with China, it wouldn't just be the U.S. and China, and I think that's where a lot of people get caught up on sure right we have treaty allies who are sworn to come uh and be part of the military campaign like japan mm -hmm. south korea the philippines australia new zealand it's a lot of allies in the region that's correct yeah that's a lot of firepower he continued china in my estimation will not be ready to take on the u.s in a very mature way for about 10 years mm -hmm. uh so i think we have a bit of a grace period here where we can strengthen our military to preserve deterrence and also try to use diplomacy and all the other means we have to take the tension out of the relationship. And it's nice to, to know that there is 10 years potentially on the board here. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. a lot of people like to think this is happening tomorrow. Of course. You know what I mean? I think that's not a good way to live. Um, but to be ready is a different story. Right. Look, I mean, here's... I, I hate this whole situation because lots of people that i know uh, would ask about like oh is it safe to mm. go to taiwan you know with all the tensions yeah. between china yeah. and taiwan and you know the thing is i had people asking me that like close on 20 years ago yeah, yeah. imagine you could have been in taiwan you could have raised a family you could have bought a house you yeah. could have who knows you know 20 years is a long time yeah but if you were worried to do something because of these so-called tensions, um, you would have missed out on that opportunity. Yeah, I think it's it's also really, I hate these like prediction questions. I don't hate you guys for asking them, mm. but it's one of those things that like- You can't know. You can't know, but you it, like uh, this guy has military, like high military background. These estimations are gonna be more accurate, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I think it's more realistic to say, we're not going to war with China tomorrow. Sure. And it's not just going to be the U.S. versus China. Mm -hmm. And if anything does happen, there is a lot of people that are on the U.S.'s side, and that's ever changing in the U.S.'s favor. Yeah, especially recently. Yeah, China isn't winning no friends in the that's region. Right. Yeah. I don't think anyone really. Mm -hmm. Don't. <laughs> no, I'm not. He's say supreme. I, I know. All I right, know. supreme commander. Yeah. I know. I know. It's like when you get the rice coke and, <laughs> yeah. and the extra fatty. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. This yeah. isn't the basic dollar menu. No, of course right? not. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah. Um, is that it for worldview, or did you? I know uh, there's else? another. There's one more. Oh, there's story. one more thing. Okay. I'm I wanted checking. to. It was because it's in line. Mm -hmm. uh, I like always like to give everyone an update on the Taiwan thing, and some people I see are talking about Taiwan, and I see this on, on a certain political side, is that yeah. they, they like to talk about Taiwan like it's no one's problem and it's just like a regional thing over there. But it is, because if you think about this, going back to that thing, yeah, maybe it doesn't happen in the next five, 10 years or whatever. Sure. But the, the thing that's going to make a potential world war and the thing that's going to make a US-China conflict happen is Taiwan. That yeah. is what it is. That's, yeah. that's the thing on the board here. Correct. So we have to pay attention to what happens there politically as well. Mm. And something that really blew up in China's face in probably the worst possible way is that they have been trying to meddle with China or Taiwan's um, presidential election. Yeah. yeah. Like to the tune of millions and millions and millions of dollars of trying to influence campaigns. Yeah, and sending spies, spies in there to go and meddle and do it's things. Been, yeah. It's been outlandish, right? It's been out of control. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, is that they, they say, hey, if we can, if let's just say people don't want to vote for the pro-independence party anymore. Remember Tsai Ing-wen, the former president? Maybe people get tired of that and they want some more economic uh, growth, mm. even though Taiwan's economy is doing super well. Very and the well. Stock markets are up. Yep. But let's just say people want more growth and they want less of this political tension with China. Mm. We can maybe potentially influence a, a, an electoral uh, campaign. Sure. We can influence at least maybe over the next, we can, we can plant the seeds for the next few elections, right? To where yep. people are going to have elect someone that's more sympathetic to China. Maybe we can get reunification or I should just say unification. Never yes. been part of China. It's never been part of China. Um, maybe we can get unification through peaceful means by just throwing elections there, mm -hmm. right? The problem is because of all of the press and because of the sheer amount of uh, meddling, meddling, yeah, and and the fact that Ch Taiwan's like a ninety four percent on the Freedom House Index, they talk about problems, they talk yeah. about the meddling, they talk, the journalists can talk about this stuff. Yeah, they have YouTubers that can talk about this stuff, right? Yeah, people are aware of it. People are aware of the meddling. China doesn't understand that when they go and meddle in a place, if they meddle in a dictatorship, they can control the narrative there. Yeah. But if you meddle in a democracy, the people are going to talk about it. Correct. So what's happened is 
they've got no one on their side anymore. So the three potential candidates, right, for the DPP, you got Taiwan's People Party, and the KMT, the Kuomintang, who has traditionally been much more sympathetic to China, none of the candidates for these campaigns are pro-China anymore. Yeah. Because they know they'll lose all the votes. Yeah, because of all the meddling. Because of all the meddling. And because of all the meddling, it's changed the whole landscape of Taiwan even worse. Look at these three things. The proportion of people in Taiwan who identify primarily as Chinese has plummeted to below 3% now. Yeah. If you ask a Chinese person who has to follow state media in China, they would tell you that all Taiwanese people want to be part of China and they all identify as Chinese and it's just America's puppet state and the, the people, they want to be part of China. Yeah. Because that's what they've been told. Yeah, but it's not true. Less than 3%, mm -hmm. guys. We're at... Taiwanese people that identify as Chinese is less than 3%. That is not a majority, my friends. Nope. <laughs> it's uh, prompting even the party that had the most ardently pursued, uh, who most ardently pursued peaceful political union with Beijing to do everything to shed its pro-Beijing label. We've got, they've got no allies in the parties left. Yeah. It's done. It's great. Anyone who wins now, being close to Beijing is not on the table anymore. They've yeah. ruined it. Young people in Taiwan neither feel they are Chinese nor do they have affection for anything Chinese. Uh, quite the contrary. Uh, deputy head of the KMT. So even the, the, the yeah. KMT. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? They're the bad guys. It wasn't until the war in Ukraine and the war in Gaza that people started paying attention. Taiwan needs to prepare quickly. So, I yeah. mean, we have people that were traditionally closer to China now that are just throwing that whole idea out the window. Yeah, it's interesting to see that happen. Yeah. It's good when people can have open discourse about things, yeah. you know, yeah. and not be told what they must think. Yeah. And that's why China does so well in Africa when you've got those corrupt yeah. dictatorships and so on, because they can just, you know, bribe the heads of state there and bribe the government and nobody has a say, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, guys, it's time for us to hit our Yum Cha segment over here, which, of course, is our, uh, let me find it. Here it is. This is our Q&A where we answer your questions and you question our answers. It is Friday, guys. It's time to relax. The weekend's on its way. And hopefully, unlike me, you don't have to work tonight because I have a video to finish for you guys. But, um, <laughs> you know, hopefully you guys ah. get to chill um, and have a fantastic weekend. So let's uh, roll the weekend in slowly with yes. some uh, answering of Super Chats. What Sounds do we got? Good. 